When it comes to making animated content, whether that's big explainer videos or simple projects that require a few graphics, creating animations in After Effects really isn't all that difficult. If you're new to creating animated videos, it may seem like a lot to unpack. However, I'm going to share with you 10 animation tips to make you unstoppable when it comes to producing animated videos. Let's get started. In these first two tips, I want to share perhaps the two most popular animation types and how to easily create them. The first animation is an overshoot animation. This is where a graphic animates in, but overshoots its final transform value. To create this, add a keyframe for any value, and you know, I'll use scale. Set the first keyframe to 0%, and then move forward and set the last keyframe to 100%. Then we'll move a few frames to the left and increase the scale to be larger than 100%. Lastly, select the first and last keyframes and hit F9 to make them easy ease keyframes. And we can use the graph editor to smooth these keyframes out even more with the handles. And now we have a great overshoot animation. The next animation type is a bounce animation. There are two common ways to go about creating this. The first way is by adding this really long expression. And I don't know about you, but I ain't remembering all that. But it works very well and you can adjust these values within the expression to easily vary the bounce. Unfortunately, YouTube will not allow me to paste this in the description of the video for you to copy and paste. So I'll drop the expression in a downloadable text file. The other way to do this animation is to manually add keyframes. So set your first keyframe, then set the next keyframe value to your final position. Now go back and forth every three to six frames, adjusting each bounce to have a lower value than the previous bounce. And when you're done, you can right click all the keyframes and select Rove Across Time. Then make your final keyframe an easy ease keyframe. So that's two ways you can pull off a bounce animation. Since we're on the topic of animation types, it's very likely you're going to need graphics to follow a very specific path. If not now, later. So here I have these graphics animating in a circle. To create something like this, select the ellipse tool. However, you can also use the pen tool to create any path you like. Then draw out a mask with the selected tool. You can set the mask to none because we don't need that garbage, but Copy the path and then go to the position and paste. You may need to select all your keyframes and move the motion path. However, this is how you animate anything along a path. Now, let's dive a little deeper into repeating animations. You'll see here that these bubbles follow this custom path that I made. However, once the bubble goes off screen, it essentially goes back to its start point. To do something like this, just animate the object any way you like and then alt click the stopwatch and type the following expression, loop out, open close parenthesis. This will loop your animation forever. Very cool, right? But let's go back to the previous animation with the circle and I apply the loop out expression off screen behind your back. But if we type ping pong in between the parentheses, this will loop the animation back and forth. Being able to loop components in your videos is so important to keep things interesting. All right, here's a quick tip. As you may know, objects animate around their anchor points. So if you want an object to animate from the center of its layer, make sure that the anchor point is in the center. When you need to move an anchor point, grab the pan behind tool and hold control on your keyboard. This will allow you to snap the anchor point to the bounding box of your layer, making precision possible with ease. Before we move on to our next tip, if you want to save thousands of hours through your career when it comes to After Effects, check out our brand new 2500 plus animator pro pack that will help you animate scenes in seconds. You can select all or any of your layers in your timeline, then browse through 25 plus 100 animation presets and click apply. Once applied, you can stagger the layer animation here in the toolbar and just in a few clicks, you'll have a fully animated project. You can check out all 25,000 plus templates that we have and get our free 100 template pack with the link in the description below. Okay, now we're going to dive into the deep stuff. Every tip from here is all about helping you create any type of animated video with vector files, which opens you up to a whole world of possibilities. If you're looking for graphics, I always suggest free picks because, well, free is in the name, but you can search up any type of vector graphic and scene that you need. So in Adobe Illustrator, you must layer these vector scenes before you animate them in After Effects. To do this quickly, I can go through the layers and go into a group. Then I can select the group and go to Object Ungroup. Once that's done, click the hamburger icon and click Release the Layer Sequence. Then just drag these layers outside of the initial layer. And now in After Effects, you can animate all these as individual graphics. Pretty fast, right? For the next tip, before you import your saved Illustrator files into After Effects, make sure you double click the Artboard tool here and set the document size to the size of the composition you want to have in After Effects. Then select all your objects 
and scale them to the size of your project. It's a much better practice to straighten out your project size in Illustrator rather than After Effects. Then when you save your Illustrator file and import it as a composition inside of After Effects, you will have the correct size and make your life super easy. Okay, let's say you need to dive a little deeper into a vector layer and animate a specific part. For example, I want to animate the flames of this rocket. So you can right click the layer, go to create and select create shapes from vector layer. This will create a shape layer of your object. From here, you can go into the groups, kind of like guesswork at first, but when you find the layer you want, you can do anything like add wiggle pass, for example. Uh, so that's a pretty cool hack. All right, very fast tip here, but perhaps the most important when you work with vectors and you decide to scale them up, be sure to click continuously rasterize. If you don't, your project is going to look pixelated, but by clicking this little cog into the box, everything will be sharp. Okay, last tip and congratulations for making it to the end of the video. This last tip is about the puppet pin tool and specifically using it with characters. If you need to create smooth motion, I suggest using less pins rather than more. The more pins you have, the easier it is to distort your vector with hard cuts. So if we move one pin back and forth here to animate it, and of course apply the loop out ping pong expression, this will give a subtle motion that works great for some projects. Also, if you hold control on your keyboard while moving a pin, this will animate your pin in real time, which is an awesome feature. So I hope these tips are helpful. Be sure to get our free pack and always be creating.